evening, everyone, and welcome to the program. I'm Christiane Amanpour. Tonight, a top Syrian Muslim cleric tells me that Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the head of ISIS, is, quote, going to hell, following yet another of ISIS's brutal public executions. Sheikh Mohammed al-Yakoubi says the most urgent task for all Muslims right now is to spread the real truth about ISIS and its limitless horrors. In their latest decapitation video, 25-year-old Peter Abdul Rahman Kasik is dead, and a column of Syrian soldiers are also beheaded. As ISIS tries to portray itself as the group for all Muslims, it claims oaths of allegiance have come to its leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, from Algeria to Yemen. And as Allied airstrikes and Iraqi forces are pushing ISIS back out of some territory like Baji, my next guest has signed a fatwa against Baghdadi. He preached at one of the most important mosques in the Middle East, the Grand Umayyad Mosque of Damascus. And today he tweeted, we condemn the killing of Peter Kasig and the Syrians. ISIS is the most extreme group in Islam we must end it and save Syria and the world. He joined me moments ago from Washington, D.C. Sheikh al Yakubi, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining me tonight. Thank you very much. It's a horrible day to speak about uh, killing when we have to appear only to denounce its unfortunate event. I believe uh, we have to speak uh, loud and we unequivocally condemn all terrorist actions, especially now that uh, an American innocent citizen, uh, Peter uh, Kasig, I think uh, we have to speak loud and uh, very clear that Muslims and Islam have nothing to do with this. Yes, Sheikh Ali I offer my condolences. Uh, sorry, I, I hate to interrupt yes. you. I know you're offering your condolences. But I, yes. I, I really do need to ask you then, how is it then? that they have so many recruits, that they are, you know, going gangbusters through Iraq and Syria? Indeed, you're absolutely right. This is the main question. The ideology always existed. People from the beginning of Islam accused even the cousin of the prophet of Islam. Uh, this is Ali, the fourth caliph, accused him of being non-Muslim and they killed him. And we need to work, really, step our work to fight this ideology and also to deprive its ISIS from any means to recruit and here I should highlight the fact that we signed and I co-signed a letter to al-Baghdadi which refuted the ideological foundation of ISIS banning every Muslim from joining it and making it, it making it clear that this is non-Islamic anti-Islam and we must put an end to it. Now Sheikh Many of your fellow leaders and many Muslim leaders have said precisely that, that it is not Islamic and it's not a state. It shouldn't be called Islamic State. However, it is doing all this in the name of Islam. It is gathering recruits. Tell me what you think is the purpose of the increasingly violent nature of these beheadings of Westerners. And the latest was, was, was very, very violent. Indeed, indeed, it is very violent. And I believe they just want to show hatred. These people, by the way, they are not Syrians. These people are bringing terror, savagery, and hatred from all around the world just in order to take revenge, they claim, in the name of Islam, for the Syrian people who have been killed for three and a half years. Syrian people have nothing to do with these people and gangsters who have come from around the world. This is why I believe we need to topple the Assad regime, and this is the key point here. As long as the Assad regime continues its atrocities against the Syrian people, you'll see more recruits and more savagery happening and taking place. We need to put an end to this, and otherwise we might see just ISIS invading Damascus, and this is the worst of everything that would happen. Now, you say toppling Assad has to happen in order to stop this, but what they are saying is that they are the only group that is avenging, as you've mentioned, all the civilians that have been killed by the Assad regime, that they are the only ones doing what everybody is just talking about. Again, that may or may not be true, but how does one punch through that identity, that ideology that they seem to be using to effect right now? We need more work. Uh, uh, Christiana, there is not much work or not enough work on the ideological level to convince Muslims around the world. 
I, need, we, I think we need in every Friday sermon that the ulama speak out loudly telling Muslims around the world these people do not represent Islam and their claims are just based on falsehood. Again, I want to talk about this gruesome video, and you've probably seen them all over the last... This is the fifth Westerner who's been beheaded in a very short yeah. period of time. The usual step is to put yet another Westerner alive alongside the one that they're killing, to say, this is next. But they didn't this time. They haven't done that to John Cantley, who we know is in ISIS captivity. What do you read from that? Well, probably they don't have any more, but I believe here that the most important point they are trying to uh, send the message they, s they want to send it through this tape is they want to fight the world. They are challenging the world. They absolutely are hit and severely hit now and they are desperate and they want to, to, to fight to the end. The problem with these people is they don't care if they are killed because they think they are martyrs. They're going to be in hell, of course. Every Muslim knows about, uh, about this. You wrote a letter to al-Baghdadi, who is the head of ISIS. He's not going to listen to you, is he? And his followers aren't going to listen to you. Well, we don't care if he listens or not. What we care about is Muslims around the world who should listen and see the facts that we are presenting in this letter to refute and destroy the ideological basis and foundation of ISIS. We care about Muslims around the world. We don't care about him. He's going to hell, and I'm sure he's going to be, to, uh, to be killed even by his, some of his followers uh, sooner or later. There's no, uh, there's no end unless we stop people from joining ISIS. And this is what we aimed at in our letter to al-Baghdad. Do you think that the current campaign against ISIS, the airstrikes, uh, the building up of the Iraqi forces, for instance, is having an effect. They've taken Baji back. They've taken uh, the Iraqi forces, have taken back some territory. Is that having an effect, do you think? Definitely. And uh, the killing of uh, Peter Kassig and uh, Steve and James before is just an expression of uh, the disparate situation they are uh, finding themselves in after being hit. Uh, uh, but of course, there have been mistakes. And we need, I think, to step up the strategy on the ground to fight ISIS on the ground. They have a headquarter. They sieged major cities uh, and they are invading. They're recruiting a lot of people. They have a huge army. They have an intelligence uh, uh, network. And all of that uh, should be uh, destroyed on the ground. How do they manage to keep their credibility when they behead a Muslim? Peter Kassig had converted to Islam. Now, we don't know under pressure or what, but his own parents call him Abdul Rahman, not Peter anymore. There is no justification because here is a the point. They consider anyone who works for democracy as a heretic. They consider anyone who works with non-Muslims as an apostate. So there is no justification. They're just against the world. They're against Muslims. They're against everyone. They have their own group. You know what? ISIS has no nationality. Its nationality is terror, savagery, and hatred. And when hatred uh, spreads like this, and takes over the hearts of people, you see results as in this video and other videos. Let me express my deepest condolences to uh, Peter's Abdurrahman's parents and family members, friends, and to the American society, as I expressed before my condolences uh, when uh, Steve and James also were murdered in that savagery way, and also the Syrian families, because many Syrians have been killed also together with Peter and before. Uh, by the regime and by ISIS, uh, and I hope that uh, an end to this conflict soon will be put and serious action can be taken on the ground to get rid of the Assad and get rid of ISIS and unify the country, unite the country again to fight terrorism. And Thank I you. guess, finally, in this plea that you've just made, what is going to stop the world thinking that if we get rid of Assad, this kind of savagery is what is going to replace it? Syrians are not like this. Syria is an example of moderate Islam and tolerance. Jewish people, Christians, Shiites, and all sects lived side by side. And we need this long history to come back. And Syrians are ready to heal their wounds and put their hands together against all odds and come out as a democratic nation, bringing freedom and dignity to Syrian people and fighting terrorism wherever it exists in the world. Sheikh Mohammed Al-Yakoubi, thank you very much indeed for joining us tonight. Thank you, Christiana. It's a great honor. Thank you.